graphing y equals 4 over x minus 2 plus 1. The vertical asymptote of this rational function given by the zero of the denominator, which would make x equal to 2. The horizontal asymptote is determined by the number added after the fraction, which would be y equals 1. The y-intercept can be found by making x equal to 0. So that means our y equals 4 over 0 minus 2 plus 1. 4 over negative 2 is negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So our y-intercept is 0, negative 1. To find the x-intercept, we do a similar process, but this time we make y the 0 value. And we're going to try to find x. Because x is in the denominator, we're going to try to get it to be in the numerator. The way we're going to do that is first subtract 1 to the other side. And then we can multiply both sides by the denominator. And that's going to accomplish eliminating the x minus 2 from the denominator, because these two cancel. Then if you distribute on the left, you now have negative x plus 2 is equal to 4. Subtract the 2, we've got negative x equals 2 and therefore x is equal to negative 2, and therefore our x, <coughs> excuse me, our x-intercept is negative 2 comma 0. Now we have enough information to begin making our graph. So here's my axes. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And we also have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. We also have some points. We have one at 0, negative 1. That's our y-intercept. And we have one at negative 2, 0. That's our x-intercept. And from that information, we can make the left part of the graph. Now, we need the right part of the graph, too. So I'm going to make a table to find one more point on the right of the vertical asymptote. And that would mean like an x of 3. And if you plug in 3 for x, 4 over 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So we have the point 3, 5, which is about here. And we can then make roughly what the graph is going to look like. Graphing y equals negative 8 over x squared minus 1. The vertical asymptote of this rational function can be found by setting the denominator equal to 0 and solving for x, which you can do by adding the 1 to the other side and then taking the square root of both sides and remembering that you get two solutions, plus or minus 1. So we have two asymptotes. You could have also solved this by the quadratic formula or by factoring. The horizontal asymptote can be found uh, by knowing that the denominator has a greater degree than the numerator and therefore the horizontal asymptote is automatically y equals 0. The y-intercept can be found by making x equal to 0. So y equals negative 8 over 0 squared minus 1. This turns out to be negative 1 on the bottom. Negative 8 over negative 1 is positive 8. So we have a y-intercept at 0, 8. x-intercept, that's found by letting y equals 0. So therefore, 0 equals negative 8 over x squared minus 1. And then if you multiply both sides by the denominator, x squared minus 1, it'll cancel on the left or right. And then on the left, it'll just multiply by 0, leaving you with 0 again. And so we have to find out when does 0 equal negative 8, which never happens. So there isn't an x-intercept. Based on this information, we can begin to make a graph. So here are my axes. We have vertical asymptotes at plus or minus 1. So I'll go ahead and plot those. And we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And so here's that part of the graph. Now, we don't have an x-intercept, but we do have a y-intercept at 0, 8. So 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8. And now we need some more points. And this would be an annoying one to give you on a quiz, uh, especially if you didn't have a calculator, because the points that you need are going to be in between the asymptotes, and they're going to be at uh, non-integer values. So 
For example, I could pick negative a half and one half. So I'll go ahead and do that. If you plug in x as a half, it turns out that you get a half squared, which is a fourth, minus one is three fourths, and negative eight over negative three fourths is about thirty-two thirds. Well, it's actually exactly thirty-two thirds, but it's approximately ten point six. The same thing happens with negative one half. If you pick that as your x, you get ten point six. And so here's nine, ten, eleven. At a positive one half, you get a point about here, and a negative one half, you get a point here. And that's enough evidence to conclude that we have a U. Now, to the right and to the left of the vertical asymptote, we're going to need points. So that would be like at 2 and at negative 2. If you plug in x equals 2, you're going to have negative 8 over uh, 3 and negative 8 thirds is approximately negative 2.6. The same thing with negative 2, if you plug that in, you also get approximately negative 2.6. So we can plot those. 2, negative 2.6 is about here. 2, negative 2, negative 2.6 is about here. And now you can make the last part of the graph. And you're done.